Hi everybody, I'm Linda Malash and I'm honored that I get to be a helper at today's worship service. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It is known as the birthday of the church. It's when we celebrate the fact that God's spirit has been poured upon all of his people. I'm going to share with you a reading from Acts and I want you to imagine yourself as one of the disciples. Imagine what was going through your head at this time, what emotions you might be feeling. Um, I'm sure that there was confusion and probably fear and probably also joy and uh, enlightenment. I want you to picture yourself as one of the disciples as I read this to you from Acts. When Pentecost Day arrived, the disciples were together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. So today we celebrate the church and we give thanks for God's spirit, which is poured upon us, which enables us, enlightens us, and empowers us to be the hands and feet of God on this earth. Welcome to worship at Chelsea First United Methodist Church. especially during these challenging times. So I always have a hard time quieting my mind when I pray, and it's been more difficult lately than it usually is. So something that I find that helps me is if I close my eyes, take a deep breath, and try to just um, try to be mindful of the presence of God. So I would recommend that maybe you give that a try. So as I read these words to you, maybe consider closing your eyes and just focusing on your breath, taking in and taking out and trying to absorb these words of comfort and prayer. We'll finish by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Dear 
Dear Lord, stay beside us and help us through our fears. Thank you for your love which surrounds us always. Lord, you came into this world as one of us and you suffered as we do. As we go through the trials of life, help us to realize that you are with us at all times and in all things, that your loving grace enfolds us for eternity. This is another day, Lord, and we do not know what it will bring forth, but make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. When evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubt assails us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide. You are the joy of our heart, the author of our hope, and the object of our love. Grant, it a, grant us a quiet mind and an expectant heart that by the assurance of your presence, we may learn to abide in you. We lift this all to you in the name of Jesus, praying together as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church, sisters and brothers and friends in Christ. I'm Pastor Joy, and this morning, I give a big shout out to the Chelsea High School seniors. Today would have been your graduation day, and I am mindful of the grief and the many losses that this day represents for you. On behalf of myself and the entire congregation, we send a hearty word of congratulations. We are so grateful for each of you and the privilege of knowing you. We send bushels of love and mountains of encouragement and assure you that better days are ahead. Our scripture reading this day comes from Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel and his people were exiles in a faraway land. This reading from chapter 37 begins with a vision, a vision of a valley of dry bones. It was representative of how they were feeling alone, like there was no hope, no life available for them, no possibilities for the future. I invite us to hear these words together from Ezekiel 37. And as you do, I invite you to listen for a word of hope. The Lord's power came over me, and while I was in the Lord's spirit, God led me out and set me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. God led me through them all around, and I saw that there were a great many of them on the valley floor, and they were very dry. God asked me, human one, can these bones live again? And I said, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the Lord's word. The Lord God proclaims to these bones, I am about to put breath in you and you will live again. I will put sinews on you, place flesh on you and cover you with skin. When I put breath in you, you will come to life. You will know that I am the Lord. I prophesied just as I was commanded. There was a great noise as I was prophesying, and then a great quaking, and the bones came together, bone by bone. When I looked, suddenly there were sinews on them. The flesh appeared, 
and then they were covered over with skin, but there still was no breath in them. God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, human one. Say to the breath, the Lord God proclaims, come from the four winds, breath. Breathe into these dead bodies and let them live. So I prophesied just as God commanded me. When the breath entered them, they came to life and they stood on their feet, an extraordinarily large company. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. The prominent question in this story from Ezekiel, is there hope. It was the question uppermost for Ezekiel and his people. It was the same question that Jesus' disciples were asking on that Pentecost morning. They were hidden away, wondering what now was to become of them. It is a question that we have been asking ourselves in myriad ways over the last several weeks. And God says to Ezekiel, speak to the bones, Ezekiel took a leap of faith and proclaimed to them the word of God. And the bones began to rattle and come together. They stood and they were filled with breath and they came to life. The Holy Spirit breathes life into dry bones. And the promise of God rings out in this story once again. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. Oh, friends, Pentecost is about life, vitality, possibilities, daring to dance again despite our circumstances. You know as well as I do that being alive does not happen automatically. It takes intentionality, a rhythm of work and rest and play, connecting with God and those whom we love, reaching out beyond our own selves, serving others with compassion, listening for God's voice in prayer, practicing gratitude, stepping out in faith. Without these things, we can become overcome. It's easy to get wound up and paralyzed by our circumstances. Ezekiel challenged his people, and he challenges us to look beyond our immediate circumstances because God is not confined to those circumstances, and those circumstances do not dictate the possibilities for God. God's spirit heals hopelessness. God's spirit nurtures resilience. As Vivian Green wrote, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It is about learning to dance in the rain. When I think about you, my friends, I never think about a valley of dry bones. In you, there is life and vitality, integrity, purpose, deep faithfulness, and extravagant generosity. I experience it from you personally. I see it acted out in myriad ways in our community and beyond. Your willingness to say yes to a task or be a part of a new ministry, your incredible work of donations through Faith in Action, making phone calls, sending letters or emails, chalk messages of encouragement these days, shopping for others, putting up with yet another virtual meeting, accepting social distancing, even when it's hard, knowing it is the right thing to do. Yes, the pandemic has unsettled us, for sure. And as I look back over the last few years, I can see moments 
when we have been discouraged, faced challenges, perhaps even been sidetracked, sometimes we have allowed the questions or critique of others to cause us to doubt our calling from God or to feel insecure about our ministry. And yet, I see possibilities emerging even in this time. Creative opportunities are presenting themselves. Recently, a friend shared this quote, that which is your salvation appears as your undoing. That's what I see happening in this pandemic, this pandemic that has taken so much from us, this pandemic which means that some things will never ever be what they were before, even some of those things that we cherish. And yet, in the midst of letting go and confronting our own grief and loss, we are also moving in fresh directions, discovering creative possibilities and energy, cultivating new boldness to do what experts have counseled us to do and we have needed to do for some time. We, the people of Chelsea First United Methodist Church, followers of Jesus Christ, have been called for such a moment as this. It is not a time for us to cut and run or roll over and give up. It is a time for us to show the stuff of what we are made. And by the grace of God, we are doing just that. We are confronting, asking, and seeking answers for new questions. What do we really need to do? to reach people where they are with a love and grace and compassion of Jesus Christ. Now is the time, dear friends, for us to grab the ring, to seize the day, to embrace new technologies and new ways of being the church to claim unapologetically that we are about loving people into relationship with God in Jesus Christ, that black and brown lives matter, that God calls us to be a community of non-discrimination and inclusiveness without exception for all, to refuse to settle for good enough. As Pentecost people, we are enabled to do extraordinary things. Now, I will admit that sometimes the extraordinary thing is just getting out of bed and making it through another day. Sometimes the extraordinary thing is being attentive in a meeting with colleagues engaging in a difficult conversation with someone, going to a medical appointment, enduring another long sermon from Pastor Joy. We all have days like that. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to get through them. That second wind that comes along, that fresh breath, that helps us just when we need it to get a difficult task accomplished. An encouraging word that gives us a boost that we can persevere and get this thing done. Nobel laureate and Holocaust survivor Elie Vassell has observed that the Valley of Dry Bones story from Ezekiel has no date. And he believes that that is true because every generation needs to hear in its own time 
that these bones can live again. God's spirit heals hopelessness. God's promise rings true. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. We are feeling the spirit leading us into new arenas of life. Friends in Christ, we are coming alone, alive, afresh, daring to dance again, even in the rain. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes. Amen. Our Glimpses of Grace moment gives witness to the ways the Spirit moves in us, bringing life and hope. Thank you, Jane Pacheco, for sharing your glimpses of grace this day. I invite us all to listen. Hi, I'm Jane. I'm a mother, daughter, partner, friend, seeker, change maker, and storyteller, sharing a moment of my story with you today from the middle of a weird pause in what is hopefully the middle of my life. Many weeks ago, when the official school closings kicked off a series of stay-at-home orders in Michigan, I immediately turned to the stories of my life that had served me in the past. Order, ritual, research, authority, productivity, these longtime friends had always helped before, and I thought I could count on them in these strange days too. At first, I was eager to engage my go-to pals to help organize my days, plan my future, and catalog my progress. But as days stretched into weeks and then months, a new and constant companion took up residence shrugging off invitations to work with my old life skills. Her name is Unknowing, and I am not going to lie. At first, it looked like she was being smug to my besties. Though I am still reluctant to embrace her fully, I have to admit that Unknowing's omnipresence has allowed me to start seeing a few things differently in recent days perhaps even offered a number of glimpses of grace. First of all, and not unironically, being in a place of not knowing has unearthed a bevy of things that can be known. I'd like to share three things that bring steady comfort to me right now. Backed by extensive psychology and neuroscience, Yale psychologist Dr. Emma Seppala asserts that social connection is the greatest human need after food and shelter. My stay home, stay safe experience has backed that up 100%, and I am certain that people will always find a way to connect, maybe even hundreds of ways. Texting, calling, Zooming, even good old regular mail. We connect via all types of online learning and classes, personal and professional. There are music lessons, concerts of all sizes, global, national, and even more local. There are games, cards, trivia, online and in person, book discussion groups, connecting or reconnecting with family and friends. No one is too far away. How about virtual early morning coffee clutch or happy hour get togethers? Classmates, teachers, and schools are reaching out in the best ways. 
and our spiritual communities are finding new and exciting ways to bring us together too. We are still sharing holiday traditions and food and love from a distance, as well as streaming live yoga and other group exercise with our people. And then there is time for baking, treats and breads, and cooking new foods and even new life skills for some of us. We are building and growing, sharing, giving, receiving, and we are all part of something bigger. No, these connections are not the same as being in person, but beforehand, I never would have imagined there could be so much connection in isolation. While we may all have heard about being able to see the Himalayas from New Delhi, blue skies in Los Angeles, and clear water in the Venice canals, have you had a chance to observe what is happening right here at home? Spring sprang, and with it, buds, blooms, and flowers. Grass is growing, bees and butterflies are frolicking. It is astoundingly beautiful. Nature beckons us to connect to the earth. Grounded, my anxiety subsides and grateful wonder pours in. Which brings me to share a final realization that unknowing has illuminated. The sticky wicket of holding both joy and sorrow simultaneously. There may be no escaping the bad news, but there is also no way to ignore the good news. In fact, one might argue that you cannot really experience either without experiencing both. So I practice sitting with my new friend, unknowing, in seemingly unrelenting stillness, and I breathe, and I try to listen. How do you sit with unknowing? It is so uncomfortable. If you're still and quiet enough, maybe you will hear a distant whisper begging you to listen. Maybe what you thought you knew was just a story. Be careful here. That momentary reveal uncovers yet another, and there is so much more respite in known stories, foundational and familiar versions of how to exist. Not at all like the unraveling, challenging, thriving stories of how to live. Oh. Uh-huh.
that sings the power of your wings. Born of your grace, we rise, love shining in our eyes, held in your hands, born on your wings. Alleluia, come Spirit, Dear friends in Christ, hear God's promise once again. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. God's spirit is granted to you freely and with abundance. May the spirit at work in you inspire you to generosity. May God's spirit comfort and grant you peace. May God's Spirit fire you up with hope and energy as you go forth to serve. Go in the peace and power of God, three in one, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen.